Good morning, Trinity, and welcome to our online worship service for January 24th, 2021. The other exciting things we have going on at the life of the church, next Sunday, the 31st, we're going to have our youth director, Abraham McCune, is going to offer the sermon. And then just around the corner is Lent, and we're going to have a wonderful new series called Emily Dickinson and the Poetry of Lent. We're going to be delivering these packets, these devotionals, to all of our local addresses in the church. We're going to send out digital copies if you want a copy and download it if you live farther afield. We're going to be using this, and Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, the 17th of February. We're going to have a 6 p.m. parking lot service with a new sound system. And we're going to offer drive by ashes on your way out. So that kicks Lent off, the wonderful season of contemplation, of repentance, and of focusing our hearts and minds for Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, this year on April 4th. To look forward to these, we are going to be offering Wednesday evening services via Zoom. Stay tuned for more information about that throughout Lent. But we have some wonderful things coming up in the life of the church, even though we're still remaining socially distanced and not gathering in the ways we would like to this year in 2021. But we know that light is at the end of the tunnel. Since we are still red for COVID spread in Stark County, we are going to offer the service online digitally and in our sanctuary for up to 70 people via RSVP. Would you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Gracious Lord, may all that we do this morning be pleasing in your sight. May we lift you up in our words, through our deeds, in our hearts, in our very souls. May this time together, while we are apart, be enriching for all of us and give us spiritual sustenance for the week ahead. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen.
When I think of God's presence in the world, I am grateful. Grateful for the presence of hope, grateful for the gift of life. And when I think of God's presence in my life, I am humbled. Humbled by the gift of grace, humbled by the invitation to begin again. And when I think of God's presence in this community, I am glad. Glad to be surrounded by holy people worshiping our holy God. Thank you all. Thank you, God. The scripture for today is from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When Jesus had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Here ends the reading of the Holy Word. Would you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The scripture this morning tells one of my favorite tales in the Bible. It's the calling of the first disciples. What a great story we have in today's scripture. Jesus calls the humble fishermen, Andrew and Simon Peter, James and John. And he tells them to leave the life they have been living with no promises of riches, of fame, or fortune. And he calls them with the simple words, follow me. In Mark's gospel, just a couple of weeks ago, we began at the beginning with John the Baptist, who has been preparing the way for the one who would come after him. Christ was baptized in the Jordan, announcing to the world that he was the son of God and now ready to begin his ministry. It is quite revealing that Mark's version of the gospel starts off on such a humble, modest note. Now Matthew has his mysterious star in the east and the magi who follow it. Luke gives us layer upon layer of drama surrounding the birth and later appearance of Jesus. John, of course, brings us in the most spiritual realm to the outer rim of the galaxies and tells us that Jesus was there at the beginning with God when all things were created. But not Mark. Mark's gospel begins with Jesus just appearing out of the desert and going to the Jordan to be baptized. Mark reminds us, even without the birth story of Jesus, that Jesus began his ministry in the most humble of circumstances, in the most humble of locations, Galilee, that backwater of the Roman province of Judea. In Mark's gospel today, we have Jesus on the edge of the Sea of Galilee, gathering his first followers. Andrew and Simon Peter are the very first to join with Jesus. They have been disciples of John the Baptist, but John urges them to leave him and follow Jesus. John has prepared Simon Peter and Andrew and proclaimed Jesus as the Messiah, and now he releases his former disciples to an unknown fate. He urges them to follow Christ wherever he may lead, and they boldly agree to follow. They must have wondered, of course, what they were getting themselves into when Jesus tells them, rather cryptically, 
that they will no longer be fishermen in the sea, but they will fish for people from now on. What the heck did that mean? I'm sure they were thinking. At that moment, they had no idea where Jesus would lead them. They had not yet seen the miracles, the power, and the glory. These words were cryptic, yet Jesus says so much in these few words. His words contain the central theme of the gospel. If you want to know the word made flesh, follow Jesus and bear witness to his ministry. If you want to know what love is like, follow Jesus. If you want to experience God's glory to be filled with bread and water that never perishes or ends, to quench your thirst with the living water. If you want to abide in love, to behold the light of the world. If you want to know God, follow Jesus. Jesus is calling each and every one of us to follow him, wherever that may lead. And we often have no idea what the path will look like. He is asking us to put down all of those things that keep us busy and worried, to put down our distractions, our fears, our burdens, and follow him. He is asking us all to make room in our lives for Christ so that our lives may be fulfilled. But what does it mean to follow Jesus? What does our life look like when we do? When we follow him, I believe, we are called to transform our community, to love our neighbors, to perform acts of compassion and grace for everyone. Following Jesus starts by transforming our lives from within. As Christians, our love of others is a response to the love that Christ has for us. We love others because we were loved first. We follow him by allowing our hearts to be transformed and all else, all of our actions will come from that. But what does this look like? Let me give you an example. Now we all know that we've lost a lot of people here at Trinity over this past year. Some of them were able to have small funerals, but some of them didn't have any. So I'm gonna take a moment to tell a little bit of the story of Lucy Rush. Lucy, of course, I considered her one of the matrons of the church. Everybody knew Lucy. She came to church every single day. Every single day we had church, she was there, if she could. And she came dressed to the nines with her hat and her beautiful outfits. Everybody knew Lucy. We never were able to have a funeral service for her because of COVID. But we knew her because she took church seriously and always showed up. But the other thing that she did was she lived this life of a Christian. She was there for so many people. Many of you watching this right now have Lucy Rush stories. I went to see Ron Eshelman right after his wife Carol died four years ago. And by the time I got there, there was a coconut cream pie sitting on his table from Lucy. She beat me to it. Lucy used to take Norma Scheffler to chemo treatments every week for years, despite the fact that Lucy was quite a bit older than Norma. Lucy wrote cards, brought the staff gifts. She was always there to do those things humbly and quietly and never, I know right now she's looking down at me telling me to stop it and to be quiet, because she didn't do it for the praise and that's also a part of the call of Jesus. When we follow him, we don't do it for the praise or for the glory or for the riches. We do it because it's the right thing to do because he loved us first. So then we show that love to others and that's what she did. So I'm using this moment to talk about her since we did not have a proper funeral for Miss Lucy Rush. Now don't get me wrong, she called me out when she disagreed with what I was doing. And when she called you out, you sat down and you listened. She was not afraid of controversy, afraid of speaking her mind or saying what she believed was right to me or to anybody else. And for that, I appreciate her greatly. Because we all need that voice of conscience in our lives sometimes. 
and she lived her life by example, showing what it was like to follow Jesus. And for that, I know she enriched all of us here at Trinity UCC. Lucy went with Jesus when he called her. Andrew, Simon, Peter, James, and John were called by name, and they answered Jesus' call. Even though they couldn't see what was to come, even though they could not imagine what was going to happen, they took the invitation from Jesus and they walked with him. They trusted him. They knew he would not lead them astray. We all need to be like those disciples and heed the call to come and see and follow Jesus when he calls wherever he leads. And I believe that Jesus is coming right now to the doors of Trinity and saying, follow me. He is going to the broken corners of the world and is saying, follow me. He is reaching into the broken places inside of us and he is saying, out of the darkness, I am bringing light, follow me. Jesus is gathering all of those who are hurting, who are full of loss and grief and fear and saying, follow me and see how I can raise hope out of this sadness, soothe this grief. Jesus is right here in Canton, saying there is hope that comes out of the violence, sadness, and pain in our city. The good news of the scripture today is that I believe Jesus is standing right here at the doors of Trinity, and wherever you may be gathered, Jesus is there with you. And just like Simon Peter and Andrew, James and John, Jesus is calling each of us by name. And Jesus is saying, follow me. Follow me to see the kingdom of heaven on earth. Follow me to see a world built on peace and love. And I believe we are all here to help create this world. Despite the violence and division we have seen in our nation. By walking with Jesus, following as disciples and taking action to create the kingdom here on earth, that is what Jesus calls us to do. If we seek Christ, he will seek us. The invitation in scripture is very clear. If we turn our lives in the direction of peace, turn our lives in the direction of love, turn our lives in the direction of humility, and reach out to the least of these, Jesus will be there with us. And Jesus is saying, I love you, I trust you to come and follow me and see what we can do together. And all we have to do is answer the call. All we have to do is say yes and walk out the door with him. We don't know where it will lead. We don't know what will happen, but we do know when we say yes, that will be the moment that we transform our lives and transform the lives of those around us, just like Lucy did for 93 years. I pray that we may all learn those lessons today and put them into action tomorrow. Amen. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Gracious Lord, help us to have the courage to follow Jesus when he calls. Help us to have the courage to reach out to him when he extends his hand to us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us to have the courage in this world that seems so fraught and so broken and so divided and so full of anger. Help us to turn that tide by calling upon Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Help us to turn that tide to a world that is united in love, in grace, a world where we are instruments of your peace, Lord. Help us to do that work inside of us right now so that we can do that work in this world. We know that you have called us to be your people, Lord. Help us to have the courage to do what we must do to make this world a more peaceful, unified, and loving place. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me now in saying the prayer that Jesus taught all of his followers as we say it together. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we ask you to please give back a portion of the gifts that God has so freely given to us all to help support the mission and ministries of this church right here at Trinity UCC. We can't do it without your support. We rely upon the generous giving of all of our members each and every week, and especially now as we are still separated more than we would like to be, as we are still trying to figure out how to be church the best way possible when we can't be together in the ways that we would like. We rely on you to keep us going. So please give generously now. You can click the link in this video. You can mail your checks and offerings into the church. You can drop them off in front at the secure lockbox by door one. Please give generously, and of course, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. May you go forth this week walking humbly with our God. May you walk hand in hand with Christ. May you follow him to wherever he leads. And may you have the faith to know 
that wherever that is, while the journey may not be visible to us now, it will lead to grace, love, compassion, and hope as long as we follow him. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.